Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Derek Young. We are here with you, ready to talk a little K-State basketball as they prepare for the Big 12 tournament. They get to face an opponent that they already saw during the regular season, but they only saw them once because of the way that the Big 12 works now. Some of these teams, you know, K-State could have been playing BYU for a third time. Instead, they're playing Texas for a second time. The Wildcats did not get the Longhorns on their home floor. They went down to Austin, played an ugly game. Neither team looked good offensively. And K-State made it interesting enough at the end to make it a six-point loss. But Texas kind of controlled it throughout the latter part of the second half. And then Dede Ames got a flagrant foul. So you wonder, before we talk anything game-wise, will there be a little bad blood here? between K-State and Texas for uh, what Day-Day did down in Austin? I don't think so, because I'll be honest, I forgot about it until you just brought it up. So now maybe the guy, they, was it Kendall Weaver that mm-hmm, he took yeah. out? Maybe he didn't forget, but I doubt it. I, I, I just don't see anything to it. No one's really talking about it. It was, you know, you know Coach Tang kind of addressed it after that game too, saying Day-Day shouldn't have done it, but he's still learning of when to do those things and when not to. So I, I don't, I really don't see it being a deal at all. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll monitor, but I, I'm kind of with you. I don't think that it's going to matter too much, especially because honestly, the reaction by uh, the Texas players in the bench in the moment was like pretty, pretty well mannered given what Mild. took place. Like you wanted to, have- yeah. You it wanted to fault like, them if they acted out more than what they did because it was a pretty egregious foul by Day Day. But yeah, and it was more like, "Come on, man!" That was yeah. that was that was what their reaction was. No, it's uh, it's gonna be an interesting game. Uh, they only played once. Texas is a is not as drastic as West Virginia in this. I know we were talking about teams, you know, in relation to the sum of their parts. Like Iowa State is a much better team than the sum of their parts. West Virginia, considering the talent that they have, is a much worse team than mm-hmm. the sum of their parts. And not to that extent, but so is Texas. Like Texas, considering the sum of their parts and the talent, uh, should have done much better this season. You, it's easy to say that they underachieved. With that being said, um, Brian playing some of their best games in the last month of the season because they completely annihilated both Texas Tech in Lubbock, and then Oklahoma, I believe that game was in Austin. Yeah, it's good. They, they played well, and I think one of the more notable things is that we know that Dylan DeSue, he got injured in that Baylor game, so you know he's not maybe at 100%, but he did play against Oklahoma to close out the regular season. Max Acemas is obviously incredible. He's, he's made big noise in March before, but probably the most notable thing for Texas going into this game is that Tyrese Hunter – had probably his best game he's had since leaving Iowa State as a freshman. Uh, He went off for 30 against Oklahoma. And adding a third guy that can do something offensively is a wild card that makes Texas a dangerous matchup because the first time these teams played, we we already mentioned, the offenses were not very good in the game. And so much of what Texas did was like, "Eh, Max and Dylan are probably going to figure this out and put it in the hole for us. But if they have a third guy and they can get some flow to their offense, this is going to be a team that they've got the talent and the athleticism to make life really tough on K-State and other teams in the league for that matter. It's not just a K-State being bad thing. It's they could go out and challenge anybody in this league when they're at their peak. Yeah, that's what Texas is best is capable of winning this Big 12 tournament. They did last year. Now this team is much different than it was a a season ago, but – the talent still exists on that roster and they do need Tyrese Hunter to be that third guy, especially when they get into the NCAA tournament, because I think they're going to run into some issues if they only have Desu or they only have Ace Miss. Um, they need other people to step up. They've had a few guys just not be what they thought they would be. I think Caden Shedrick's one of those. I know he's been banged up a little bit as well. So th- they have their things and, and Kansas state, You know, kind of a a similar picture. Now, I wouldn't say Kansas State drastically underachieved, you know, relative to what Texas did. Uh, That's not what I'm trying to compare here. But if Cam Cam Carter getting right against Iowa State is sustainable and and goes through the Big 12 tournament, Arthur Kaluma does what he can do. He, he, He probably had fewer cold stretches than the other two guys. 
<laughs> so if he's who he, he is for probably what 75% of the time, now you kind of gotta get Tyler Perry right. But I because he's had two rough games in a row, but he also when he has his bad games, he's still bad, but he kind of figures it out enough. Uh, just with a play here and a play there, like his motor doesn't st- stop running. Uh, just, I mean, despite that bad, that bad moments, I, I, you know, at home on senior day against Iowa State, and then he, he hits the most difficult three that he attempted all game in the second half in a pretty critical moment. So I worry less about him, and I also think he didn't really sputter for as long stretches as a Cam Carter this year. So him getting right seems a little bit more palatable. Um, a little bit more doable, a little bit, little bit more realistic. And if you can sustain Carter stretch here and draw it out for longer than a game, and, and Kaluma uh, does what he can do, uh, you know, for, for most of the time, I mean, Kansas State's capable of ripping off a stretch here in Kansas City as well if those three are going at the same time. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, talking about Tyrese Hunter, Cam Carter, what Tyrese Hunter did for Texas is kind of what Cam Carter did for K-State on Saturday because it had been a really bad stretch. I mean, it had been weeks since you had been able to say, yeah, Cam Carter played well in in a game. And he did it on Saturday. And that's and it's not just the fact that he scored and was efficient and all that. He only turned the ball over two times, which had been a really tough thing for him lately. And I think it just goes to show that Cam Carter is a very frustrating player to watch because if he's not turning the basketball over, he has gotten better. He he is, I think, a better offensive threat. He can carry the load. He there is development that has gone on with Cam Carter. And even going back to last year, I've said like he profiles and has the the skill set to where he could be a really good player. But he's got to have the mental game down. He has to understand how to play the game. And when he does and takes care of the basketball, he gives K State a really good chance because if Cam Carter is giving you something. I feel pretty confident that either Perry or Kaluma will step up there. I think Cam Carter has kind of been the key in unlocking, okay, you got two two of your three guys to play well. So his his kind of bounce back against Iowa State is big moving forward, and we'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, I think all these guys have the ability to, to help carry K-State, and I think Obviously, we know Tyler Perry wants it really bad. We saw it against Cincinnati. He was trying to will it. Didn't work out there. Uh, you know, the the stuff in Lawrence, everybody played bad, so I'm not sure that, you know, what we can glean too much for that. Even good teams have played bad there. But what we saw on Saturday <laughs> against – again, yeah, yeah, exactly. So what we saw on Saturday against Iowa State gives me a little bit more confidence because I wasn't worried about Tyler Perry mailing it in. I think he just had a tough day on Saturday. The other two, Kaluma and Carter, I did have some concern about are they going to have the same kind of fire and fight that I think Tyler Perry still wants to have? And they answer that question by saying yes on Saturday, when, by the way, they could have easily have mailed it in during that game, not just before it, but they got off to a slow start. Things did not look good. And instead, both of them caught fire and they helped carry K-State to a much-needed win. I mean, you take out the first – with probably five or six minutes, maybe a little bit longer, but I think mm-hmm. it's five, six minutes. Take that out. Kansas State, to be honest, not only did they control the game, they had game control throughout after that first portion, but they kind of dominated, right? Because at one point they were down, I think, nine, 11 points early. And then they shot out to a 17 point lead, 43 to 26. So um, just a really good stretch of basketball that they need to be able to sustain. And very reassuring because like you, I don't know if I would say check out. I don't know if I just thought that they'd mail it in, but I wasn't sure that Kim Carter had the physical ability to go back and play a good game. I just thought he was, you know, I mentioned he needed to get right. I didn't know if he had the ability to get right until like next season. I didn't know if that was going to happen this year, not because he didn't want to. I just didn't know if he could, figure it out or muster uh, that kind of performance, but he sure did. And, you know, an underrated aspect while Cam Carter's wasn't right. And while Kaluma was a little bit inconsistent was not only was Tyler Perry cooking at that point, even though it wasn't going absolutely the way that Kansas State wanted it to go, but 
it might be a little bit of a hyperbole, but it felt like you almost are starting. You almost got a fourth guy with David Gasson too. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I think that is pretty significant. Look, he's never going to be a guy with an expanded offensive game. I mean, maybe with another off season, he can really harness that in and, and, and continue to become more and more of a shooter from the outside. Cause the stroke's not bad, but obviously it's not going in enough to, you want to rely on it or him to do it in high volume, but he still figures out a way to score. And it's his ability to get to the basket for being what six foot nine, six foot 10, probably a seven foot wingspan. So he becomes a really dangerous offensive player if he could find a shot. And maybe that's the skill development in the off season that he needs to really hone in on, but he still finds ways to score. He scored in double figures a few times now in the past few weeks, uh, is being fierce on the glass. And I think we've always given credit for being an elite defender. So I I think that's critical too, in the makeup of this team and how they're starting to evolve a little bit, despite the losses at Cincinnati and Kansas. So, you know, there was a time, I think of almost a month ago, Jerome Tang, even during that losing stretch, it's like, we are getting better. And it didn't feel like it. And we thought he was crazy. And then right after (laughs) that, then right after that, it's like, okay, maybe they were getting better, but, even if the results hadn't shown it yet, because it feels like they have gotten better. That doesn't mean they're going to make the NCAA tournament. They could still be one and done because Texas can play that good and and Kansas State can still play that bad. But you do have to like that some of the pieces have started to come together a little bit better. I will say a little worry of mine is we all know that David Gassam, despite him probably being the second best player on the team in the last month or two, just because he's been so consistent. Yeah. He is battling some, you know, real uh, soreness, whatever you want to call it. He's hampered, and they have to manage it. He's not going to go and practice much. Even Jerome Tang mentioned that when he spoke to the media on Monday. How much of a role does that or how much of a factor does that play when you have to play back-to-back-to-back? It's a good thought, and that's one of those deals where I think for K-State it's – I think so many teams, you, you try and manage us during the NCAA tournament and conference tournaments when you need wins. It's, okay, how do we try to prepare for what's next? You just got to worry about getting to what's next before you can actually start to think about it. So you got to do what you got to do to beat Texas because if you don't win this game, then your your opportunity to be an NCAA tournament team, it's non-existent. You win this game, you buy yourself another day, and you hope you figure it out there against the team in Iowa State that you've probably played better – than any other team in the Big 12 considering both times you've played them this season where it was close in Ames and then you got the win in Manhattan, which I went and looked it up for you. So Iowa State took an eight-point lead uh, and then K-State scored again with 6-16 to play in the first half. They outscored Iowa State 55-40 to over the final 26 minutes of the game on Saturday. So it took them a bit to get going, but once they did, they had the halftime lead and they kind of uh, cruised from there. Yeah, and you mentioned it was an eight-point Iowa State lead. Well, Kansas State did get out to as big as a 17-point lead. So in True. that stretch, they outscored Iowa State by 25. Uh, another note for you on David Gasson. The Cats are 6-1 and one this season when he has at least 10 rebounds in a game, which he did uh, on Saturday when he grabbed 16 boards against Iowa State. Uh, the he only loss. Them. He patted the, them. Nothing yeah. against them, but I think four he, well, or five he missed those on shots. One possession, I think, at four yeah. or five. And I don't think they even ended up scoring on that possession. No, uh, no, because he got fouled and they didn't call it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Gasson, the only game he didn't, uh, the K State didn't win, and he did score, grab 10 boards. Uh, do you have any guess on what game that was? Well, I hope it's not Texas or Iowa State, but I feel like it probably no, was. It, no, don't worry. It's not <laughs> Texas or Iowa State. Uh, Texas, uh, the first time around, he was 12, 12 and 7 in that game. Was so. it Tech? Because that's a game you probably should have won. Uh, no, Tech, uh, Tech, only four boards. It was USC. Uh, he had 10 and 10 against USC, and obviously K State lost that game to start the season. It really sucks the, the way that things that went for USC and Miami because Kansas State played two totally different versions of USC and Miami, yeah. and Kansas State is a different version now. Like, I. Now, who knows? But I feel comfortable Kansas State would beat those two teams right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I I, think you're absolutely right. And I, I've said this all year. Uh, Miami, I think people understand a little bit more because they like to shoot it, so there's a little bit more volatility with what goes on with them, uh, and they could do whatever. Damn. USC, I just really think that 
that was a team that they were they were too dumb to realize that okay we're gonna have some problems later in the year because we have all these guys that want the basketball and we only play with one of them i think that's a team that their best possible like play was to start the season and i don't think it was going to get any better from that point moving forward because i think you have a couple of guys uh that that really want the basketball and that's kind of what their game is and boogie ellis and isaiah collier two things i, th- I think you're really right i also think there's some probably behind the scenes nil stuff going on at miami if i had to guess because that feels like something is just happening there mm-hmm. it doesn't feel right and for usc all of a sudden, they're playing really good basketball again. So watch yep. out for them in the Pac-12 True. tournament. Getting hot. Uh, well, they saw, uh, I guess, you know, the Pac-12 is kind of ripe for the taking in that league. If somebody knocks down Arizona, anybody can go out and win that thing. Uh, one final thing on K-State in Texas. Uh, what is your your prediction for Wednesday's matchup between the Cats and Horns? Well, we kind of talked about this uh, in our group text, but I'm like kind of getting bullish on Kansas State again, which makes me scared. Like we were both like, gosh, we got hope again. But I really do. It just feels like some of the parts are starting to come together. Texas is underachieved all year. Sometimes those teams do play better when the lights get brighter on a tournament stage. So that worries me a bit. But I, I don't know. What's Is there any impact, too, of Texas leaving the Big 12? Does that make them go out and be a little bit more – into it because they don't want to go out with a whimper. Uh, that's possible. Their women's team. I mean, we, the, we saw Missouri know. do it. Missouri won the Big 12 tournament their last year in the league. Yeah. So, in and te- then lost Texas, to Nichols or not te- uh, Norfolk State. Texas won it last year. You know, there, there's a million ways I feel like you could take annuals at this game. But at the end of the day, I just think that Kansas State because they have more to play for is going to win because teams that typically have a lot to play for, they typically at least get one or because, mm-hmm. and there's also a lot of conspiracy theories that happens, you know, especially with the major conferences, when you have bubble teams playing in massive games early on in the tournament no, that they just say, ask Josh Eilert, he'll tell you about it. Yeah. Just let them win because the more tournament teams the league has, the better. Now Texas might not give a shit about that because they're not going to get the money anyway. So I think this is one of those deals where if you're K-State, you got to go out and pounce early. And yeah. because Texas doesn't have like any major reason to go out and perform well in Kansas City. Yeah. It's just, you I, know, the, hey, the we're, we're, one, we're a good basketball team. We want to play it. But it like the Sioux has been banged up. So if you jump out to, you know, a 15 point lead or something at some point, maybe Rodney Terry is like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to scale things back with Dylan to to make sure he's healthy. We don't need to push him, you know, full bore in this thing. Yeah, I mean, that's potential. Uh, the only thing that they might have to play for is the way their resume sits now. That They might be in that 8-9 game. Yeah. I don't know if they want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so NCAA tournament seating is a little bit of a factor here. I think crowd could be a factor. Um, I know Kansas State's in the same session as KU, so you might end up with some KU fans. And Iowa, well, I guess the first day doesn't matter because Iowa State's the, the next day, but yeah. Yeah, no, Iowa State's the next day. So we'll see. Now, I... KU fans, they're probably still going to go, but you know they have, they're not going to have Hunter Dickinson or Kevin McCuller. Yeah. So their turnout might be a little bit lesser than usual. Yeah, which I'm I am fascinated now to see what that uh, situation looks like with with uh, what that the version that KU puts on the floor. That's actually going to be pretty entertaining to <laughs> to probably watch. Uh, and yeah, and, you're or, right. Or, I mean, or excruciating because Bill Self is such a good coach; he's going to figure out a way to win with that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I think it's just going to be fun to watch a bunch of guys that like have been kicked down and you're like, these guys are terrible. See if they rally together and make a big push Uh, to your point about Texas, the latest bracketology from Joe Lunardi. uh, He has Texas as an eight seed uh, and the one seed there is Purdue and the nine seed that Texas would have to face is Florida Atlantic. So probably (laughs) not, probably not what Texas would prefer. So, uh, oh, yeah. they oh, well, could beat Purdue. Yeah, I mean, they that's they honestly they could. They have the guard. They yeah, they could do it. The Max Aismas would give Purdue fits. They would freak out. Or uh, or, so. or you could, and we're going off a tangent here. You, or you could get a second round matchup between Vlad Golden and Zach Eady. Boy, uh, two guys that just I do not like watching play <laughs> basketball. Uh, look, I Ken Palm says it's seventy three sixty nine. Texas wins this game. 
I kind of side with you. I think K-State has so much to play for. And look, there's a big chance that they show up and lay an egg because that's just kind of how this team is built. They, they're they going to give you the highs and the lows. There's no really steady performance there. Uh, but I, I think this team, they've obviously played better over the last five games. And, you know, they're they're a, a last second shot away from being four and one in their last five and feeling better about themselves. They lost to Texas the first time, but now you get to come back closer to home. You'll have more of the crowd advantage against the Longhorns. And I think having that drive and everything else, I think K-State does get it done and they at least live to see another day with their NCAA tournament chances and then kind of see what shot they get uh, against Iowa State on Thursday. So, Yeah, and and Tyler Perry, he's got a knack for really showing up in tournaments, right? He he did it in the conference. It was a Conference USA. Is that American? North Conference USA. Conference USA. He's really done it a few times. Obviously, the NIT. I think Tyler Perry's going to have a big game. Kansas State wins. Um, But I I don't have a lot of faith they beat Iowa State the following game. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one, especially just so recent for Iowa State that they would have gone through and played that. Uh, Weird little note on teams playing somebody they finished the regular season against, which is something Iowa State could do to open their Big 12 tournament if K-State wins. Uh, We discover that Jalen Bridges – three to- or two times already in his Big 12 career has started the Big 12 tournament against the team that he played his last regular season game against. So doesn't matter. Just kind of something fascinating. Uh, they played Iowa State last year with Baylor, and then his freshman year they played Oklahoma State with West Virginia. So does not matter. Just something, uh, a little nugget to throw out there. Who do you like to win the Big 12 tournament? Are you just going to take the chalk with Houston, or do you got you got something else? Uh, I think it, I think it probably ends up being Houston or Iowa state. I just think Houston's so good that unless they decided, Hey, we're just throwing this thing because we we're set and we don't want to, you know, play three games in three days and tax ourselves. I just think Houston, they seem like an unbeatable team right now in the way that they play their defense is great. And then the offense is, is good enough to carry them. So I I think it's Houston, and if it's not them, then it probably ends up being Iowa State because they also have a great defense, and they'll obviously have a big crowd on their side uh, because everybody else there, like, I don't like Tech to win it. I just don't think Tech's good enough to win it over three days, especially no. considering that they'd have to beat Houston and then Iowa State or Baylor. And Baylor but, Baylor historically is is nothing special in Kansas City. Yeah, no, good, good reasons all around. I the logic in a lot of these, and, and, and yes, I've put some bets down in futures for conference tournaments, is to, to take one of the teams that has the most buys. So yeah, be, that's the logic. Yes, a team could sneak in and win it without having a double buy, but a lot of these conference tournaments now, the, the single buy, the double buy, mm-hmm. you get the one. So you, you're picking probably between four teams if you're going to use that logic, which I think is – the smart way to go. And like you said, I don't think Texas Tech's good enough. And I think Houston's almost got a pass to the championship because the top half of that bracket is a lot more navigable than the bottom half of that bracket. Yeah. So, but Houston earned it uh, by going 15 and three in the big 12. So not taking anything <laughs> away from them. They earned that path. Yeah. The um, top half of the bracket, I, I'd be interested in, I'm sure there's a way to look quicker, but I'm not going to, delve too much time into finding it it feels like the teams at the bottom you either have two that have been really good most of the year iowa state and baylor and then you have four teams there that i would say um they they can really bottom out and throw up some stinkers but at their height they're better than like i would rather have k-state's best than oklahoma's best or tcu's best probably not byu uh and i would say the same thing about texas and ku but I think that those teams, they're, they're volatile enough that they could bottom out, and that's why they ended up where they did, 6, 7, and 10 seeds. And Cincinnati can be thrown in there too. I mean, they were highly competitive against a lot of teams. That's why I think the top half is just a little bit easier. And if anybody comes from Wednesday to win it, I think it ends up being BYU because they'll have the shooting and maybe they get hot and that's how they take down a Houston or somebody. Uh, I, but it just – you're right. This is catered to Houston, and that's that's how it should be. They're the one seed. Yeah, I think if anyone's going to come from Wednesday and win it, it's not BYU because they have to go through Houston. Mm. That's why. 
I think it's probably Texas because they have the talent to do so. And Iowa State and Baylor are much more beatable. Now they have to get through K-State. They could easily lose the first game they play. Yeah. Uh, and we're both predicting that. But I think Texas is the most likely team on Wednesday to win the entire thing. If I was to say a pick a team, I mean, it's hard not to pick Houston. But, boy, for some reason I feel like it's kind of set up for Baylor a little bit. I, I kind of like Baylor. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. I don't hate Baylor. I think this team could maybe do it. Jalen Bridges played well in the Big 12 tournament last they have year. They play defense. That's their problem. Yeah. Yeah. And make their make their shots. You can't have a, a bad shooting day. But we'll see. Texas has won it two of the last three years. So they are the hot team in Kansas City right now. We'll see how it all ends up playing out. Uh, we're getting this finished up just before the games tip off on Tuesday morning. Uh, so we'll have the play-in games it, it, taken care of and set, and then we'll have. Yeah, a, a and you know why I don't? You know why I don't like Iowa State because they play a way where they're just reliant on the other team not shooting from the outside well. Yeah. And I don't know if you can win three games in three days with that style. And K State didn't even shoot it well from the outside and still beat them on Saturday. So that would be a, a slight concern there. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, Iowa State is a low ceiling offense. We've known this. So if somebody comes in there and is is scoring well, they they are going to have a tough time making it. So we'll see. This is outside of Houston. If if Houston gets beat early by somebody, anybody could win this thing. And and that's the that's the truth, especially considering the shape that some of these teams are showing up in. Especially KU. Yeah, especially KU, who no Dickinson, no McCuller and Kansas they City. They, yeah, they basically punted the Big Twelve tournament. I mean, there there's a realistic chance that Cincinnati is playing I is playing for a chance to go to the to the uh, Big Twelve championship game on Saturday night because of the way things have set up for them now. Uh, so we'll see. They'd have to get past KU and Baylor, which this KU team like there's still going to be talent on the floor. It's just it's it's a lot more like West Virginia talent uh, when Dickinson and McCuller aren't there because those two guys like. You know what you're going to get every game, and they're they're so good that like McCuller hat or not McCuller, but Dickinson has some of the West Virginia head case mentality to him that I think like Kirk Creesa and Raekwon Battle and some of those guys have. But he's so skilled offensively that he can be above that. Where like you know if Creesa's in his head, he's not going to do much for you. There's a there's a chance there that they still put it together, but it's that's even more volatile than what. Uh, KU has been throughout the season. So we'll see how it goes. We'll have full coverage in Kansas City on Wednesday. And uh, for however long the Wildcats decide to keep their stay at T-Mobile Center as they try to fight for their NCAA tournament lives. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. Head over to On3. That's where you can find our full site. Get all the recruiting, football, and basketball news and info that you want. And also be sure to uh, – be ready to go on the premium message boards if you're a member because you can talk about all things K-State or cross country and track and field. It's hot in the streets right now. So go check it out over at K-State Online.